Hey there, Wizard of Apprentices. Welcome back to another episode of Visual Workflow. We're going to do something a little bit different this time. I was planning on talking about subflows, but I got a lot of requests from people who are just having some trouble figuring out how do they make their flows work. And so we're going to talk about something that everyone really should know, and that's about how to debug your flow. So let's talk about ways that you can debug your flows. Now there's a couple of different ways, and to be honest, none of them are all that great right now. So here's our wonderful flow here that we have created in a previous episode to create an account and a contact in the same time. And if I just run this and I just put a whole bunch of bogus data in here and try to hit the next button, I'm going to get this wonderful error. Now, in this case, I know exactly what's wrong because it tells me invalid email address. But this could be simply an unhandled error that you just don't know what's going on. So how do you handle this? Well. There's a couple different ways. If you're having a flow like this that has screen elements, what you can do is simply insert a screen between each element as a debug. Um, one of the things I like to do is actually create a text template that has all the different variables. Now, in this particular set, saying I have a whole bunch of input fields, so I'm going to go ahead and grab the account name and email address, as well as the first name. And the scroll down, last name, email address, and so forth. I already grabbed the email address. What am I doing? I really like you have email address. Okay. So let's grab that. And this way, I can come through and have this nice little message that tells me, you know, this was my account, and this is my email address. First name, last name, and we'll call this error message. Message. So now that I have my text template, I'll go ahead and add my screen, and we'll, this will be my debug error mess error screen. We'll add our display text which will be warning message, and then put our text template in here. There's another item that we could add here, and that's called fault flow message. This is pretty handy because if there's an error someplace else, it would actually tell us what it is. Now specifically, that's really useful if you're doing these types of screens, which is the fault screen, and that's something completely different. So let's go ahead and move our wonderful flow over, and I'm gonna save this as a new version since this is active, and let's call this debug. And now, when I have the opportunity to run this, I run my flow, I put in my wonderful little error, uh, values in here and I can see what the output is. This is really nice when you're doing things that are passing information in say from a custom button like you're trying to pass in the opportunity ID for a flow or an account ID or any other piece of information from your custom button you can see what it is on the screen but that's a little bit of a tedious method. There's another method which is using the developer console. So if you click on your name and select developer console, you're presented with this nice screen here with log information. What you want to do is go to the debug menu, select change log levels, and then make sure that under workflow, this is listed as finest. It is normally under I info, and that won't give you enough information. You want it set as finest. Now, when we run our flow and we put in our information and click next, next and get our error we'll open up our developer console and we have a whole bunch of debug logs in here that we can take a look at the debug logs will tell you things like when did the flow start what flow it's actually firing um this one is actually a very very terrible example because there's not a lot of information in here um, but it, this is actually beneficial with much longer, more complicated flows where you're doing a whole series of different things. Uh, you'll notice everything basically will start with the word flow in the event, and you can get an idea of what's in there. Although, to be quite honest, this is actually quite tedious as well. So, what is a person to do? Well, screens are great. Um, they can kind of help you. Uh, the 
other thing that you can do is use an email instead. So this is really useful if you're doing a flow where you do not want to have any screens because you're going to call it from Apex or maybe from the process builder, or you just don't want screens in general because you don't want the user to even know what's happening. Then instead of using the screen debug, you'd want to send an email. And so this is just an action under the static action menu, and you can do something very similar. So we're going to do send an email. Our body is going to be our text template that we created that has that air, all the information that you want in there. Um, I would add the fault message to that text template to make sure that we get this. And then I would put error on, and then the name of the element that caused the error. The last thing you'll have to do is select an email. You want to do email addresses comma separated, and this is where you would put your wonderful email. So I'll, I'll do wizardcast at thewizardnews.com which is our podcast, click OK. And now instead of having this debug screen here, which we'll remove, we'll pass it us over, and now we have a nice little friendly email that it will send me. So this is a little bit better in the sense that you're not having to pop up a lot of screens. Um, it will work with auto, it would work with trigger ready flows, but it's still not all that ideal. Now, Summer 15 came up with a new version of the debug email and I'll take a look at that right now. So when you experience an unhandled fault, and this is an error that your users will see and you would see, uh, you would always get these wonderful little emails. And before summer 15, the emails were less than useful. You would get this nice little thing that says an unhandled fault occurred running in whatever and what it was. But now it'll actually go through and it will tell you the flow details. It will give you each element and then tell you essentially what the error was. In my case, in this particular example, I was trying to do a post to a chatter group that was archived. So I could see everything else fired correctly until it got to my chatter post and then it failed. So this is a much better way of really getting an idea of what's going on. Um, but it only works for certain unhandled exceptions. It does not work really well if you have something that's not causing an unhandled action like your flow successfully completes but doesn't give you the output that you expect. So these are a couple of different ways that I use to debug my flow. None of them are really perfect right now. Um, Salesforce knows this and they're probably going to be working very hard and trying to get us better versions. But in the meantime, when you're dealing with flow issues, make sure you do the following. If you can use screens, always have a screen or multiple screens so you can check what your input is coming into the flow and what your output is between any interactions that you're asking the user. This is also pretty handy to do when you're dealing with outputs when your flow completes and you don't expect it. So examples of where you might want to use that is in the after the record creates or fast lookups and so forth where you put a screen in so you can see what is actually being queried out of the system if you're doing a lookup or what's being created or updated. And that way you can say, okay, my value was this and now I got that. Why did I do it? And you can see the intermediate step. If you can't use screens, make sure you use emails. Emails are a better way of doing things. I usually like to keep an email as a debug option within screens that I'm using for production, meaning that people are actually going to cause errors and I actually just want an email sent um, because I'm getting lots of emails I'll actually just have a rule that automatically shoves them into a general flow folder and that way I don't spam my inbox but that way when a user does call me and say you know I just got this weird error or something's not working I have the emails as a backup to refer to we can also use the developer console as we looked at before to check out and read the, uh, the logs again that really works well if you have pretty deep uh, multi-values this is like, what, a three stage or three, this is like a three element flow. So it's not the greatest example, but you'll see examples of what it goes through. This is really nice to use when you have a flow that's live in production and you have clicked the button and a whole bunch of stuff that's occurring and clearing, updating records and so forth. You can see everything that's going on here.
So that's it for this quick episode. I hope this helps people try to debug their flows and get things running successfully. Thank you very much for watching. As always, please make sure that you subscribe, like this video if you do it. I love to hear feedback. So if you have any pieces of information of what you would like to see I do differently or other things about flow that you would like to learn, please let me uh, let me know in the comments here. Or you can go to thewizardnews.com and post a comment on the blog posts over there. So once again, thank you for watching. And remember, the magic is out there. It's yours for the taking.